Welcome back to Cooking Delights and this is my sweet treat series. Today we are going to be cooking anytime cookies. I'm going to link the in the description the name of the website that I got this from. The ingredients you need are as follows. 500 grams of butter unsalted, 300 grams of granulated caster sugar, golden, six drops of vanilla extract, three free range eggs, 240 grams of plain flour, two teaspoons of baking powder and a pinch of salt. Now this is a double recipe so if you want to make a smaller version just half it. And for the good stuff that will go on top of your cookies before you bake them are as follows. You can have anything you want. We've got a selection here. Mini marshmallows. We're going to crush the dime bars and we're going to crush the crunches. We're going to chop the bone for chocolate into small pieces. We've got hazelnuts. We've got biscoff. That will go on when the cookies are cooked. Almond flakes. Um, milky bar buttons. Fruit gums, Reese's buttercups, and after night mint bites. To start off with, we need a large mixing bowl and we're going to pour our sugar into our mixing bowl. The second thing we need to do is to have room temperature butter, and we're going to cut these into small pieces. As you can see, it's quite soft. If we add uh, cold butter, it, you won't have the effect because what we need to do is we need to beat this together until the mixture becomes pale. And if it was cold, you wouldn't be able to do that. So I'm going to continue to cut this up and I'll show you what to do next. So as you can see now, we've cut our butter into um, chunks. We don't need to cut it any smaller because it is quite room temperature so it won't mix well. What you need to do now is to whisk your mixture until it becomes a pale consistency. So I'll just give it a quick whisk. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make sure that everything's scraped off the sides. And then I'm just going to give it another whisk. Just make sure it's all in contact. the butter and the sugar together and it's gone pale what we're going to do now is add our vanilla extract and then we're going to incorporate our eggs now be very careful because if you do, if you just put all that in now and try to beat it what will happen is it will split and it will curdle so we're going to add it a little at a time and I've put a tea towel underneath to stop the bowl from slipping because I'm going to be using two hands so you know, Now this is nice incorporated, the egg mixture hasn't curdled. So we're gonna what we're gonna do now is we're going to add 
the flour. It's very important that you sieve the flour. So we're going to put the flour into our sieve. And then alongside the flour, we're going to add our about two teaspoons of baking powder. And we're going to add a pinch of salt. And then what we want to do now is to sift that in. Getting rid of all the lumps as we go along. Next thing we need to do now is to incorporate the flour into our batter and what we're going to do is going to use a spoon instead of the whisk and then we're just going to keep folding until all the flour is incorporated. We've incorporated our flour into our mixture and we've got our, our, our anytime cookie batter. What I've done now is I've cut a piece of cling film because what we need to do, we need to divide the mixture in half and I'm going to show you how to roll it up in the cling film. So, as I said, this is a double mixture so I'm going to take out half. Don't worry about guys, my hands are clean and I'm going to lay it on top of the cling film. And I bet you're wondering why I'm doing this. And if you think about the title, it's called Anytime Cookies. What we're going to do is to harden the mixture. So we're going to put it into the fridge for an hour. And because they are Anytime Cookies, what you're able to do is to freeze it. And then when you want a cookie, all you need to do is to take it out of the freezer, cut a slice off and put it into the oven. But what we need to do is get the mixture to harden in the fridge for an hour. So I think that's one half of the cookie mixture. Make sure you get everything off the spoon. Right. Next thing we need to do is we're going to use a palette knife and what we're going to do is we're going to try and make a sausage like shape. Spread it out a little bit. It does have to be absolutely perfect, just so you've got a sort of a shape. And then what we do next is we're going to fold it. So what we do, we take it, and what you want to do is to roll it. make a form. So you're sliding it out to make the size of the cookies that you want. These are going to be big cookies. So when you've got the shape that you want, what we do then, this is why I've got the extra cling film at the end, we're going to roll. And you're going to keep rolling until you get a tight sausage like shape and then I'm just going to tie the ends up and there you have our first one complete as you can see now that I have rolled out the two uh, cookie batter ready it is going to go in the fridge now for one hour to firm up so then you'll be able to chop them and then place them onto your baking sheet.
much, much, much later. So we took our dough out of the fridge. It did take a little bit longer than one hour, and the reason being is it's quite a wide mixture. So if you have a thinner mixture, an hour would be enough. If it's not, pop it into the freezer for say 15 20 minutes after the air is gone if it's not uh, firm enough it needs to be quite firm for you to handle so what i did i put mine in the freezer so what i'm going to do now is we're going to chop the end off and we're going to unwrap our dough and chop the other end off easier for you to get to and unwrap it again ensuring that your chopping board is clean okay and I think what we're going to do is going to we want to make quite a large cookie so if we chop it in pieces and add it to our chopping board Now you want this quite spiced out because it will it will expand. And now I'm just going to continue on putting the rest. As you can see now we have got 30 cookies these may be slightly a little bit too thick so I'd suggest you cook them some, uh, thinner because these will probably make large cookies and they might they might flow into one another we'll see how it goes so now we're going to add the toppings so so here's the toppings that we're going to use I'm going to save the biscoff to the very end because I'm going to top that when the cookies are done and then we're going to add a few selection of different cookies and make combinations. chocolate bonville dark chocolate we've got we've got one there for our biscoff after eight mints fruit gummies s'mores dime bar and crunchy i've got one of uh, reese's cups with almonds and then i've got white chocolate and dark chocolate right we're ready to put them in the oven i've got two ovens here uh, this one is at one eight, uh, 200 because it's a normal electric oven and this one is my fan assisted oven which you need to be putting at, at 180 
So I'm just going to slide in my first two. And they're going to cook at around 8 to 10 minutes. These might take a little longer, so I would suggest looking at them at 8 minutes. See, what you want to do is make sure that you, when they're cooked you've got a slight golden tinge that is around the edges. I'll check in you guys when they're done. As you can see now, this is our final product. They did take about 11 to 12 minutes. I would keep checking. As you can see, some are crispy than others. Uh, my children like them crispy, so that's why we've done that. And they can be a little bit fragile. So when you're storing them, guys, and especially if you're going to use a plastic tub, what I suggest you do is use parchment paper in between each layer because they will have a tendency to stick. Thank you for watching Cooking Delights. Our next video will be another family meal and keep tuned and watch, watch out for a surprise video. Thank you guys, take care, bye bye.